Hello, welcome everyone uh, to Codurance Meetups. Uh, my name is Christian. Uh, I will be your facilitators today. And as you may know, Codurance was born from the community, so that's why we are recording this session to be able to create some content for our channels. And you will find this recording and the previous ones in our YouTube channel. Uh, that being said, I'm glad to introduce you, Javier. He's a software craft person here at Codurance. And today he will be continuing the Python meetup series, talking about software architecture in Python. And I will be sharing the, the first one that was about testing and the second one that was about patterns. I will be sharing them in the, in the chat. And well, as always, please feel free to participate by writing any questions or sending directly the questions to me or to Javier or uh, however, however you want to do it. And we will have also a Q&A session at the very end of the talk. So now please give a warm welcome to Javier. The stage is yours. So welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks to be here. And let me share the screen to to start this this meeting today. Okay, can you see it? I guess so. Yes. 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 Let yes. me put it here. Okay. Perfect. So, um, as Christian said, uh, the plan for today is to talk about uh, software architecture in Python. Okay. And uh, many of you know, or, or some of you know, maybe that this is the third part of a session. Uh, focus on the three main pillars of uh, software development, which are testing, uh, uh, software and design patterns, and software architecture. Okay, and this one will be focused on uh, software architecture. The presentation uh, uh, was shared in the in the chat. I think Christian has the the link, so you can ask uh, for the link, and you can access it. Okay. And I will use the presentation uh, to guide a little bit the, the session, OK? So as always, the, which are the goals? The goals are that we code happily. Uh, the goal is that we provide value uh, to you, to the community, uh, even to myself, uh, and the, that we learn together. No? Uh, this is not like. Uh, uh, one too many. Uh, I, I want to open a discussion here. Uh, questions are more than welcome. Ideas, etc., uh, etc. Et okay. So, and um, because uh, I know it's Wednesday, it's the middle of the week. Probably you have been working. And let's change the mood a little bit. Let's think about, as always, we do uh, here uh, during this year. Focus on, on on this topic of Indiana Jones. Le let's feel the the thrilling of adventure, the coding, exploring uh, new ideas, and and discovering uh, maybe hidden secrets uh, within the code. So be prepared, uh, because uh, the the plan for the session uh, is the next. Okay. I split the session in two two parts. Uh, the first part will be reviewing some some concepts, and we will spend uh, ten minutes talking talking about that. And uh, then we will we will go uh, to the code. And in the code, we will see uh, an example about uh, what I, I would like to call a chaotic uh, architecture. I will explain later. Uh, and we will move from that uh, chaotic situation uh, to a more uh, order one. Uh, and we will review uh, a pattern there that is the, the repository pattern. Okay. As I said, uh, the estimation is 30 minutes. I would like to, to be brief. Um, and the code is in this repository. I think the, the link is also shared in the, in the chat. So let's go for it. But before anything else, uh, I would like to, to remind you that uh, we count with your feedback. And your feedback is really important. Okay, So uh, you can find in this uh, slide uh, a link to a questionnaire in which uh, we are asking some questions about what do you think about these sessions, about the meetup, uh, about the topics. And if you are watching this uh, of, uh, in YouTube, uh, I will be really, really uh, glad to, to hear your, your opinions in, in the comments. 
Uh, so the next session, uh, if you propose some topics in the in the comments or, or here, uh, or even the chat of this session, um, we can we can prepare and take your your thoughts uh, in account for preparing new new sessions and, and topics. Okay, good. Uh, saying this, let's go to the topic. So let's review some concepts, okay? Uh, about architecture or on architecture, okay? Architecture, uh, let's define it uh, a bit uh, loosely, uh, is how we uh, interconnect uh, uh, different uh, structures uh, that combine, provide some functionality, okay? And as you can see, uh, describing a, a architecture of a building no? uh, is a is a hard task. Uh, it's really it's really huge building, uh, and uh, is composed of uh, many many elements. Okay, so we are going to focus. Uh, we are going to narrow the vision to one specific example, one specific pattern. Um, but uh, we always always with the, with the idea in mind of what our architecture uh, can bring into our project and uh, the software development, okay? So uh, in words of uh, Uncle Bob or Robert C. Martin, uh, the purpose of architecture is to support the life cycle of the system. So if we think about um, architecture, uh, it's not so focused uh, on the functionality, despite is uh, really implicit, uh, of course, because when we design a, a piece of software, we want to have a certain functionality. Okay, but um, architecture are the, the the patterns and the methods that allows us and to develop uh, and maintain uh, this piece of software in, in time in an efficient way. So the key word maybe here is efficient. So when we apply or when we think about architecture, uh, we want to apply methodologies that provide some value and that value is translated in, in into efficiency, okay? So <clears throat> for that reason, uh, during the talk, uh, we are going to have in mind always the, the DDD, the Domain Driven Design Methodology, um, because it provides, uh, as many of you may know, uh, it provides this clean architecture uh, or hexagonal architecture um, that is really uh, appropriate and really flexible. Uh, and if you don't know anything about architecture, um, provide really a, a good uh, foundation for start building uh, on methodologies on top of that, okay? So keep in mind that uh, we are going to, to have always present uh, implicitly uh, domain-driven design, okay? So uh, on top of this, uh, the architecture, or I would like to, to split the concept of, of architecture into two, two main classes, okay? Uh, one that uh, I will I will call a chaotic architecture, and one that I will call a cosmic architecture. Uh, and this is a bit fancy, but uh, it is chaotic because it's uncontrolled uh, architecture. So um, it tends to be obscure and difficult uh, and, and efficient to work with that. And then um, in the other extreme of the of the spectrum, if we think about architecture as a uh, continuum, uh, we have the cosmic and cosmic because in the ancient Greek, uh, cosmic mean, uh, means order. Uh, <clears throat> so it's cosmic because it has some some order, no? Some some patterns, some methodologies that allows uh, allows to 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 have uh, a clear visibility of the different elements and how how they, they work together, okay? And this is related to, to architecture. Uh, so remember, it's a big to topic, uh, and we are going to have to, to take in account these two, these two classes, okay? Uh, the concept in this slide, we will review it later, or probably they will pop up during the session, okay? So 
second concept of this talk is abstractions, okay? Um, during the previous uh, session, uh, when we talk about design patterns, we already talk about uh, abstractions and we use it. Um, but when we talk about uh, archi architecture, it's really important to have in mind the value of an abstraction, okay? And uh, in software uh, development, it happens something similar uh, to other arts or to other um, fields. Uh, similar to what I present in this in this slide, this is from um, a, a comic book uh, author, artist, <coughs> uh, in which he describes uh, which are the char characteristic of of abstraction. No, um, uh, what he um, mean basically is that uh, the abstraction help to capture the essential details. Uh, of in this case of a cartoon no and in the case of software the abstractions uh, will help to capture the the core functionality of uh, a class in this case and it also point <clears throat> to a fact that uh, we should not uh, start designing um uh, you cannot see I, I i don't know i'm not following the chat so let me know if I only see that the screen is there, but nothing more. Uh, Christian, is there any issue with the... Okay, so to read that. No, I see the... Well, we, we can see the architecture in Python uh, slide. Nothing else? The following? Okay, let me... No, it's not, it's not moving. I thought you were speaking uh, about this one. Okay, let me... Let me go to full screen. No. Okay, let me try to do this. Can you see it now? No? No, it's not moving. Uh, we can see you, but it's not moving there. Let me share it. Let me stop presenting. Uh, now, can you move? Yes, now, now yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, people, from the chat. So basically, you miss uh, the plan, which is this slide. So don't worry. Okay. Uh, I... So I was checking the the issue with the with the um, uh, with the links. So I didn't show your your screen. So uh, no, you can no, no. no, no worries, no worries. Uh, thank you for everyone <clears throat> in the chat. Uh, so basically, this is the, the plan for today. This is what I described. This is just the explanation about the complexity of talking about architecture and that we are going to focus on something, some uh, a specific uh, pattern. <clears throat> and later on, I described two different kinds of architecture. No, I mentioned that there is one <clears throat> chaotic architecture or uncontrolled and one uh, control architecture, OK? And that we are going to review all these uh, valid points probably during during the presentation. <clears throat> so far, so good. Uh, give me one yes in the thanks for the heads up. Uh, okay. So I was talking about ab abstractions. Okay. <clears throat> and luckily we didn't miss this because I really like this this slide. <clears throat> so what I was mentioning is that. Uh, abstractions, as we we said in the in the previous uh, session, are really important. Uh, but especially in architecture, uh, <clears throat> are key because, as this drawing suggests, it helps to capture the real functionality. No, so the same that happened here that you start uh, or you capture the essence of a face by drawing a circle, two dots, and a line, OK? <clears throat> uh, and you don't start drawing by the shadows or the colors or really the really the detailed nose. So <clears throat> in software development, uh, the, ab the abstractions <clears throat> helps to, to define the contract, OK, between the different, the different classes, <clears throat> OK? On top, on top of that, <clears throat> uh, abstraction provides some some security, no? Because 
uh, like it happens in this uh, children box, uh, each as abstraction will be one of these shape, no? And if you don't fu fulfill the abstraction, probably you cannot work properly uh, with that shape, no? And the the software the the software or the application will crash. <coughs> Sorry, and <coughs> I have some problem with my voice. So the the dark side of this is that if you don't define proper abstraction, could happen like in the video uh, of this poor girl. Um, that you can watch it later, okay? <clears throat> so I will not go uh, beyond that. So far, so good. This is after 10 minutes. Sorry for the error with the presentation. And we are about to jump into the code, okay? So um, <clears throat> time to go. Uh, as I said, uh, we will review uh, one or two kinds of architecture, okay? One that I define chaotic and one more clean architecture or cleaner architecture in which we will see this repository pattern as a, <clears throat> as a detail uh, of a clean architecture, okay? For that, uh, what I'm going to present is a web application, okay? That is for selling uh, colors, paint colors uh, on the internet, okay? Um, and for that, let's jump into the into the into the code. Okay, so <clears throat> let me know if you can see the screen, both the the visual code and the browser. Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, remember <clears throat> that you have this this repository in GitLab where you can where you can clone and work with the code. Okay. Um, the repository itself, it has three three branches, okay? And the first step will be to jump into this uh, git uh, checkout um, chaotic architecture, chaos architecture, okay? So far, so good. We have the readme, and the first thing that you may notice is uh, that we have this folder, dbconfig, which is just for setting up uh, a database, okay? <clears throat> we have a Docker Compose in which we we are setting we are going to set up uh, a Postgres database because somehow uh, this super app is using a Postgres uh, as a database, okay? So <clears throat> um, what we find when we open this super app is something really really common in <clears throat> in python python projects according to my experience is that we we find uh, okay the static and the templates that are for for a static web page okay but we find a bunch of uh, dot uh, pi files here and well, just for our, from the first look, uh, it's difficult to say uh, which is the relationship between them, uh, which are dependent on which, or, and so on and so forth, okay? So for that reason, uh, let me try to um, docker compose up to set up the, the database, and let's go to a new one. And I will do pip env, and uh, let me reduce this. Pipenv, um, I will have it here. Okay, run. So uh, I just start the application. Okay, uh, we will go further into the into the files, but just to show you the the behavior. Okay, we can go to to the local host here. <coughs> um, this is the the application. Okay, the application has one functionality, which is get paints and it will get uh, <clears throat> a group of paints that we have in our application, okay? Uh, the application can also create a random paint, okay? Um, we can create more. So if, we, if one color like this one is too dark, maybe we can uh, dilute it. Uh, maybe this is too dark and we have to do it many times but it's a functionality, okay? 
So our application allows us to uh, not only have colors, but uh, also to, to dilute uh, a little bit the concentration of pigment and, and do that. And also we can do, uh, we can add elements to a, to the shopping cart so we can buy it later, okay? <clears throat> so far so good, this is the functionality. So when we observe uh, all this complex behavior, okay, we have a bunch of features here. Um, it's kind of difficult to see from where is coming everything, no? Okay, the logic entry point is the main and the main is driving us to this uh, register uh, blueprint uh, that is coming from super app, okay? Uh, that is in the endpoints, okay? The endpoints, we go to the endpoints.py and we find that this is a, <clears throat> a classical uh, Flask-like uh, application structure where we define endpoints. Okay, we can see that this, this is the, the endpoint for rendering static. And we find that there is an endpoint for adding a pane, for, for, for what is it? For getting paint, uh, for getting the card, uh, for adding something to the card, and another one to dilute uh, a paint, and, and that's all, okay? But uh, okay, where um, this point? Where is where is this paint coming from? Uh, we go to the top usually, and we don't find anything. Uh, okay, why? Uh, because of course uh, we are using this uh, wildcard from the DB. Okay, uh, it's likely. No, we go to DB, and okay what we have here we have some classes and okay we have here a pain class so far so good so all of this uh, mumbling and rumbling uh, is to to uh, depict a little bit the the laugh the lack of uh, coherence and the the chaotic situations that we have just in the arrangement of the different the different files, okay. So we have also this data.py that is doing something with an S3 bucket. Uh, of course, we have a utils.py who who do, doesn't need, need a utils. Uh, <clears throat> everybody needs needs utils. Um, so what I want to highlight here is that it's really chaotic. There there is no structure and there is like no control on what is happening, okay? And on top of this uh, chaos, basically, uh, we can go to the DB and <clears throat> we can pay attention uh, to this thing, no? And our pain, our domain is talking about colors and paints, no? Uh, but we see that this paint is, uh, it comes from this base, okay? And this base class, uh, it's coming from the declarative base that is coming from the SQL Alchemy. For those of you who don't know, SQL Alchemy is a really powerful, beautiful uh, ORM in Python. So what we see here is that uh, somehow we have the ORM, so the interaction with the uh, relational database a couple with something that belongs to our domain, okay? We have table name here, which if we think about our model, uh, it, it is not needed. We have also some columns here, some uh, relationship. Um, when we think about all of this, um, we, we can see that if we think purely about our problem, no, that is selling or getting or working with paints, uh, the concept like uh, ORM, uh, columns, uh, relationships, uh, has nothing to do uh, has nothing to do with with our domain, and then uh, and nonetheless they are really a couple here. So let me go back uh, briefly to the presentation because the situation in which we have this is what I highlight here is that we have 
I don't know if you can see it properly. Uh, let me uh, do this bigger. So basically we have a coupling here, no? Because we are inheriting from the base and we have a coupling in the columns, the relationship, while this is not needed, okay? But uh, this is pretty common, okay? And this is even in the uh, SQL Alchemy documentation. Um, usually, if you read about it, uh, this pattern or this way of uh, coupling the, the, the domain uh, logic and the persistence logger, uh, logic uh, is called an active record, okay? Um, and this is really uh, widespread, but as, as I said before, it, pro it caused a, a, a needed coupling, okay? <clears throat> so saying this, let me switch back to the ADE and let me go to, um, to the code again. Let me close and what I will do now is do a, a big jump. I will do a git checkout to the, sorry, git checkout to the branch um, in which uh, we provide a cleaner architecture, okay? And we I will explain it to you. So git checkout to the repository pattern, okay? So the root uh, folder or scaffolding is the same. Nothing, nothing really changed. But if we open the super app, uh, you, you see a difference, okay? And the difference comes because um, on top of implementing this repository pattern that I will mention in, in a minute, uh, I arrange a little bit uh, the files, okay? And this is something that uh, I like to, to do here just to show you that uh, we can have the same thing, um, but now uh, with the help of the scaffolding, no? Uh, now the scaffolding uh, is helping me to determine, okay, where is the, the domain layer, where is the application layer, and where is the infrastructure layer, okay? So um, just to show you that uh, the functionality did not change, okay? Uh, let me go again to, 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 this, to the application. We can get paints, uh, we can dilute uh, colors, and we can create random paints, and we we can add to the to the card. Okay, so the functionalities are still there, but um, in my opinion, uh, we have gained more knowledge on what is happening uh, in the application because now. Uh, we have some separation of concern, no? So if I want to talk about something that belongs to my domain, so paint, uh, paint lines, the card or so, it's, it's here. If it's something more external to my architecture, it will be an infrastructure, okay? So far, so good. So <clears throat> let's do the same travel that we did before. Uh, if we go to the main, now we get this uh, route to infrastructure adapter REST API, which for me is much clearer than before uh, the, the endpoints.py that we have before, okay? So if we go there, we see that we don't have uh, the wildcard, the asterisk anymore, and we are uh, importing uh, a bunch of uh, uh, entities from our domain, okay, from the models. And <clears throat> if we review a little bit the, the endpoints, we see that we have the same, add paint, get paints, uh, get cart, uh, add to cart, and dilute paint, okay? But um, reviewing the, the add paint that we checked before, uh, we have a different situation, no? We have that we generate a session uh, that probably is something related to the database, we will see in a minute, that we will pass this session to something called uh, SQL Alchemy Repository, 
and that from that point uh, we have the paint here okay so let's go to the le let's go to the paint to see how it look like now looks like now um and tada uh, this is what we what we get uh, i think it's even better to see it in the presentation but uh, nah, i will show it here in the id so what we have right now is that the the class paint that belongs to our domain is something from our logic is um basically inheriting from non so it's a simple uh, python class and we uh, construct it and we have the logic for diluted paint uh, which is the same uh, logic as we have before but this time we don't have any table any column any relationship within okay um, <clears throat> and this means that we have reduced the coupling okay the coupling in in our domain in our entities okay so um, but you can say okay this is this is fine but uh, how do we provide the same functionality and let me go back to the rest api because before using the paint we have created this paint repository okay so the and, and let's go to the definition go to the definition we have this okay this is the implementation of sql alchemy paint repository but because we want to go to the uh, inner core of the concept we let's go to the abstract paint repository okay and what we have is this um <clears throat> as i said before abstraction are really powerful and uh, are really useful to define uh, contracts and define uh, interfaces okay uh, at the level of of our classes okay um what we are doing here uh, you know that in python we have uh, duct typing okay and we have the possibility also of using the abc uh, module uh, library so duct typing is more implicit so if you implement a given method uh, is enough to, to work with that um, but with ABC we do it a little bit more explicit and that's why I like it more okay and the the, the trick here or the mental uh, idea uh, is to think about repository like an abstraction on what we want to do uh, with the paints to be a store and I don't need to think about where it will be stored okay so I don't care if I store it in the in the hard drive. I don't care if I store it in the in the Postgres database, or in, maybe in a S3 bucket, or in the cloud, or maybe in a non non relational database like a, a Mongo. So this is an abstraction on top of all this uh, of any uh, persistence. A method that I will call it repository okay and what uh, I'm doing here is to say okay this repository for this paint um, we need to implement the add method the get method and the get all method okay and I'm the abstraction by itself is not implementing anything okay so when uh, after having this logic in place and thinking okay my paint my domain needs to do that to be persisted then later on uh, i can think okay but which are the most convenient way for me to to storage this this paint and then uh, i can uh, think about it and reach the conclusion that for me the best will be to use uh, orm uh, to store the data in a relational database as we had before but now the, the thinking flow is much more natural. And <clears throat> uh, now we, are, we can implement all these methods here. And these methods will take care uh, to a storage in the database. Why? Because we are using the session object 
from the uh, ORM, okay, in the in the constructor. So basically, what we are doing in the in the REST API in the in this endpoint is getting a session from the ORM and injecting it into the repository so that we can access to uh, the functionalities of the ORM, but always referring to the repository. Because if you check, what we are using is the add method of the repository. We are not uh, doing anything directly with the ORM, OK? Perfect. <clears throat> That's the utility, but you there is one last part, and is OK. Before we had uh, in the entity class um, the definition of the columns, the relationships, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the table name. How is it done uh, when we have this structure? Okay, for this, what we have is a, a new adapter, and we have this file here, uh, an ORM, and as you can see, is within the infrastructure layer. Okay, because it belongs to something really. A low level or le let's say external to our domain and the trick or the idea is to use the imperative uh, way of SQL alchemy okay so SQL alchemy provide um, two ways of establishing the the links between the classes the declarative which is the one that we used before and the imperative which is this one so for the imperative way what we have to do is to um, build uh, a table from the ORM, from SQL Alchemy. And within that table, we define the, ta the table name, metadata, the different columns, and the relationships, etc., cetera, et cetera, OK? And then later on, at the end, we are using this star mappers function to uh, say um, or to, to establish the link between our domain class and the ORM class. Uh, as you can see, this paint is coming, if we go to the top, is coming from our domain, the paint, and the other paint uh, with uh, a small uh, letter at the beginning is coming from, from this file, is from this table. So in this way, we have a mapping uh, between both two. And this is a, this is a known uh, collaborator uh, class that is the, that is the, the mapper, okay? the da data mapper. I'll leave in the presentation the different concepts that I mentioned. So, um, and this is, this is all regarding to the code. Uh, and let me uh, highlight, let me go here and highlight uh, what, in my opinion, is the main benefit. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, the benefit of this change oh, is that we switch from a, from a position in which uh, the natural thought or something that I have seen many times is okay. Uh, I, <clears throat> as a developer, based on my experience, my preference, I know I want to work with or with this database. So for working with this database, I want to use a ORM because I have a lot of joins and complex queries. And then, okay, let's use SQL Alchemy. And then, uh, okay, uh, let's build the SQL Alchemy class uh, to to have this, no? And this is the, the thought. And if we have the, or we use the ana analogy with the, <clears throat> the comic book uh, and the artist world, uh, is like a starting a drawing from, from the more detail a picture, no? So we are going into this direction. So this is kind of wrong because once you put a lot of details, uh, you are making more difficult for someone external to capture the essence of the of the contract, and you are probably making yourself obscuring the whole function uh, and the whole coupling between the different parts. Okay, by doing the change that I show you in the code, um, we switch to this situation, 
uh, in which uh, is really aligned with the DDD, in which uh, the developer think or the architect think, okay, my domain is focused on paint, okay? And my paint need to have this and this and these properties. And for uh, persistence this, uh, <coughs> I will need uh, to have these, these methods, okay? But I can just define uh, an abstraction, which is the repository, and forget about the database and the ORM, okay? Uh, so this way we are working in a more natural way, going from an abstraction to the detailed version of the of the application. And you may argue, but both versions work. And you are right, both work. And there are many frameworks out there that promote this way of working. And as I said, even SQL Alchemy uh, allows you the flexibility of working with, with the two, no? And there is nothing wrong. Um, and there is a nice plot and that is from the um, architecture patterns in Python book that I will show you later on in the references that is really good. Um, this uh, or the first implementation with active records and the ORM is probably fast at the beginning, but with time and complexity, it will not scale so well. Um, and in my opinion, uh, this graph, this plot, is zooming because the the time in which you reach this cross point uh, is really short. Okay, that's why I mentioned before in the slides that people used to think like, okay, I, I just need a a, a crude uh, application, no, so, something that um, that do simple stuff, no, but it is likely that the application keeps growing. Um, even if not, the the gap between this this gap between the yellow and the blue line at the beginning is not so big. So uh, it's true that we have increased a little bit the amount of files and implementations that we have. Okay. But it's not a, a dramatic uh, amount of lines that we need to implement to have this. Uh, flexibility to have this proper uh, uh, flow of, of thinking. Uh, so I think it's really, really positive. Um, and basically, this is the this is the session for today. Uh, so I would like you to take home the message of using abstraction, using separation of concern. Um, because this this what will promote the the appearance or will pop up the layers. Uh, use uh, with the abstraction the dependency inversion, so depends on on, on the abstraction. Um, the most important, perhaps, is uh, please uh, try to invert the the flow of thinking when you design an application instead of starting with something so specific like the framework or or the persistence layer, uh, try to think about, okay, what uh, my entities should uh, behave, okay? And from then, from that point, start thinking and going more external toward the details in the design, okay? And just three reference for you. I really, really highly light and really uh, grateful or uh, thankful for this book, uh, Architecture Patterns with Python. Uh, Harry Percival uh, did a great job. Uh, the other two are really classical, uh, presenting examples in, in Java, but are really, really key to understand uh, architecture, software architecture nowadays, okay? Um, especially patterns of enterprise application is relatively old, but super good book. And implementing domain-driven design uh, makes you really think about the domain, um, and this is this is basically all uh, for this session today. Um, I promise to be brief, and I hope I manage to do it. Uh, and now I will be open for session discussion, um, whatever you whatever you prefer.
So, thank you very you... much, Javi. Thank you. It was really, really good. I enjoyed it. I not just enjoyed it because it was Python, and I'm getting a bit more into Python than I was before, but also because all these uh, patterns are really, really common, and I really like to, to see them, how, how to move from one to, to the other. So thank you very much. So thank you, Christian. Um, so Agustin, Agustin is asking, what do you think about cohesion? It's common to see import as from XX Pepe, import from Pepe. Uh, so let's let's um, let's read it. So we have it in in YouTube. Uh, what do you think about cohesion? It's common to see imports as XYZ, XYZ Pepe. Import no. Pepe from yeah. XYZ Pablo, import Pablo. It's not better to have XYZ, import Pepe, Pablo, whatever. Uh, depends on depends on your taste and depends on on, on the style. Uh, I usually like to have the, the specific, uh, like, uh, let me jump to the code, uh, like, where we were in the REST API, like I have here, no? But it's true that you can you can start doing something like super app, uh, mo uh, sorry, domain uh, dot models as maybe my model, uh, and then I start uh, calling or oh, using the, the classes from there, okay? I think this is what you refer, uh, Agustin. Uh, I don't know if this is what you refer. But by the way, let me clarify also that um, some people, uh, or oh, maybe it's even more common, people prefer to have this scaffolding uh, in which you have a paint and within paint uh, you have domain uh, and model and then import uh, paint so people prefer to have on the instead of having the three layers on the root folder they prefer to have um, the entities and then within each entity the the three layers okay um, I don't think is uh, really important uh, as long as you have an agreement within the the thing in which you are working and the same the same for this i i use both um but the more explicit uh, i could be uh, the better for me so that's why i use i i don't know if in python is the same but sometimes uh, this uh, is uh, coupled to the well coupled or design uh, following a, a domain a domain design so it really will depend where you put the domain to and then where they they will go from there right so if you put the domain at the very beginning or you uh, and you uh, your scaffolding is let's say for in this example will be paint and then inside paint you have all the the classes or if you do go in the other way, where you have, for example, uh, let's say you have uh, repositories, and then inside repositories you have paint, you have whatever. So it, I think this will also go with with this if you go for a more domain approach. Um, yes, uh, as I said, uh, if you think about it, that's why I said perhaps it's more common. I think. Uh, the PHP book from Buenos Vinos uh, followed this approach. Um, it followed the having the the, the root uh, scaffolding based on on entities. No? Um, especially for this session, I prefer to highlight the existence of uh, the three layers. Okay, because uh, I thought that it could be misleading if I suddenly put uh, here at the at the root paint cart uh, and so on but uh, there is no doubt that that is an option yeah um, yeah 
I don't know, Agustin, if I answer more or less your question about cohesion. Ah, and thanks, Juan Pablo. I would like to, to thank uh, Juan Pablo for being here. A really, really great guy uh, with really long hair and metal style. A really cool guy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Thank you. I don't know if there is any any other questions. Um, if any questions, uh, if you are right now in the chat and maybe you didn't have time and you want to work a little bit on the repo, or if you are watching this on YouTube and you have some some questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to write a comment uh, on the video or to, to send me an email or, or similar. No, From previous sessions, people have done it and I answer really glad uh, to, to any questions or that could pop up in your mind uh, uh, at any point. Okay, So I'm really open and, and if you have any suggestion for, for improvement, and super super open to to listen also to this if you want to do a pull request uh, please do it <laughs> uh, any anything is welcome and this is more for opening a discussion and having a uh, fun exploring and coding together and i'm super glad that you christian start moving into the into python well bit by bit <laughs> we have another question in the chat now uh, from Thiago. Uh, do you think DDD is always a good option or is there any given complexity level enough to implement this approach? Um, let, let me refer to this slide. Uh, it, it, it is more complex uh, conceptually uh, and also in terms of uh, on, on, on writing the code by itself, okay? But I think um, the trade-off is really worth, uh, okay? Um, the, the main issue that I find, I don't know what is your experience, is that the frameworks uh, usually drive you in the opposite direction, no? Um, I think the frameworks with a good intention uh, try to facilitate the, the life of the people and developers, and they implement uh, within them a lot of functionalities uh, and take a lot of, of your responsibility. Because maybe, uh, well, they know for sure, because they are written by developers, they know that there are concepts in DDD that are hard and there are situations that are hard and they try to uh, reduce um, the barrier to enter into into developing uh, applications, um, but uh, I think uh, in many many cases you can use uh, most of the cases I will say uh, you can take the concept of DDD and develop a simple piece of code. Uh, um, the the effort will be worth because. If something we know from software development is that uh, things uh, and change are are there, and it's likely that the the situation of of your piece of code or your application will change. Maybe not now, but in the future. On top of that, we can also um, argue that it will be more maintainable because of the clarity. No, of the code and the concept, uh, which is a, a super plus. Uh, and there are other maybe minor things like testing. I think some people, uh, or we can argue that maybe having a repository or other uh, architecture patterns uh, improve the testing. But I, I don't think it's the main core or the main benefit of, of having a clean architecture or DDD. I yeah. don't know your your opinion, uh, Fiago. If you have any comment about it, uh, will be cool to 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 hear it. No, it's, can you hear me? Yes. 
Ah, okay. Thank you for the explanation. It's, it's okay. Yeah, I, I am just thinking on that situation where sometimes engineers try to over-engineer or do something very complex for something really easy. But I, I understand your point that it's something more maintainable and easy to test, etc. So, so I was just challenging a little. Uh, if if we should do, do that approach on, on every component or at least uh, have a, a, a common understanding of, okay, if this is something that's going to be changing and, and it has a lot of complexity, let's go for DDD. But if this is something easy or not changing anymore, let's do whatever. Yeah, well, this is the <laughs> trick. This is the, the dangerous part. And that's why I call it uncontrolled architecture, because it's uh, like, OK, let's do whatever. Uh, let's, do, <laughs> let's, let's use the framework. And then you start with an idea. And then uh, one year later, you think, OK, guys, I think <laughs> that the, the application is doing more than what we thought at the beginning. And now we have to 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 refactor it uh, or change it and or adapt it, no? And then it will be more more painful, no? Uh, okay. um, this is my my point of view, no? But for if you are really really sure that your application will not change at all, and you are fine with having this uh, active record because it's super simple, it's given like in Django with the framework and that's all, uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's super fine. But in, in, I think, I don't know your experience, I don't know Christian experience, but the reality is like the entropy, no? It's uh, complexity tends to grow uh, somehow. I, I don't know if it's human nature, the project nature, Oh, or it's a natural consequence that the product, uh, once you reach one feature, you want another extra feature. And yeah. uh, I, I think it's a natural progression to really quick uh, cross this uh, or reach this crossing, crossing point. But yeah, I, I'm also super fine to use the, the other pattern. Nonetheless, and a disclaimer: don't use the don't use the brand a chaotic architecture for as a reference, okay? Because I I wrote it I wrote it as bad as I I could, uh, thinking about all the bad examples I I have seen before, and so don't follow that. Uh, look for something nice like Django or some MVC. And, so that, that was the, the bad example, just mm -hmm. for the sake of going to yeah. the extreme. But really, really glad to, to listen to your opinion. And really, thank you. Uh, we have a, another question from Diego. Uh, I would like to use DDD on a monolith architecture using transactions. I don't have intention to use microservices. It's hard to find any books or materials on that. Can you point a direc direction? Uh, sure. Uh, First, uh, please read these um, these books, okay? Um, because they don't talk uh, about microservice, okay? <clears throat> it's true that the idea of a domain driven design it's really much uh, really much the the idea of uh, microservices because. You, tr you try to split by aggregate, uh, and this is something I didn't mention, but the repository pattern should be applied by by aggregate. And if, if you want that we talk about the aggregate, uh, we can do it in a different session. Um, but I really, really recommend you this book, uh, The Architecture Patterns with Python. And Diego, the good thing of this book is that completely free online. Uh, uh, cosmic uh, Python. So the author has this blog. Um, this is uh, Percival, Harry Percival, and the book is is online. Okay, and they have a whole uh, repository uh, with the book and also with the and also with the code. Okay, so 
basically the idea of talking of this repository uh, in this session comes a little bit from from the chapter and indeed this is the the plot that i that i saw so that's why uh, really kudos to the authors of this book uh, because it's really really good um if you are brave and you don't you are open to to read about other languages and the uh, buenos vinos uh, i forgot the name of the book i don't remember uh, this book uh, the mind river design uh, is is really good uh, I think the three of them work here in Barcelona, um, and they are pretty pretty active, and they are pretty nice people from the interviews that all the videos that I have seen from them. Yep. Okay. You're so welcome, Diego. Yeah, the blue one, it's also really good, yeah. yeah. The blue one from Evans is good, but it's, it's tougher than this one. That's yeah. why I recommend yeah. this one. I mean, this is not easy. I mean, the red one is not easy neither, but uh, is uh, more human, uh, um, simple, uh, for at least for me, than the... Evans book, but I really, really glad. Uh, I, I I think I I thank uh, all these key key authors um, in the in the repo because oops, the contribution to 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 software architecture uh, is really really huge. So Fowler, Beck, Martin, Evans. Okay, great. So maybe we can stop here if we don't have any other questions. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Javier, for your presentation. And I hope we see you soon in a new one. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to do one about future flags for Skills Matters. Just throwing it here. Um, and um, that's all, I think. Uh, thank you very much all for being here and find the link for the feedbacks that I share in the chat. Um, so please take uh, five minutes to, to fill it and see you soon. So thanks a lot, people. Thank Hope you. to see you soon. Bye-bye.